What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 27 of the tutorial series on Amazon API Gateway tutorial. In this tutorial, I will take you through on how to invoke an API endpoint using jQuery Ajax. Also, we will be hosting the same on the S3 bucket as we did in the previous tutorial that is part 26 of this tutorial series while uploading a file via HTML. So basically here we will start with the creation of the Lambda function followed by the creation of the resource with an API endpoint followed by its method. So we will be testing with the get and post method followed by its deployment and I will quickly uh, walk you through the HTML part that is the jQuery and Ajax part and then we will test the functionality. So let's get started. So we will start with the creation of the Lambda functions. So navigate to AWS Management Console and search for Lambda. And navigate to Lambda Management Console. And once you are there, click on function from the left panel and say create function. Give a function name, I will say API Ajax Lambda. I will select runtime as Python 3.8 and within permission, I will choose an existing role that is Lambda underscore API role, Lambda API gateway role and I will say create function. Now the Lambda function is successfully created and within this function in the code part, we will simply say print event and we will be using the same lambda function for get and post method. So save this. Now once you're done with the lambda function, navigate to API gateway. Now here I will be using this API gateway that is API endpoint and I will be creating the resource within that. So you might want to create a new API or you can use an existing one. So once you are within API endpoint, click on resources from the left panel, click on action, say create resource. I will simply say front end and I will say create resource. Now within this resource, I will create get and post method. So click on action again, say create method, say get and click on this tick mark. Now here we will be integrating the Lambda function that we have just created. So that's going to be the API Ajax Lambda. So I will simply copy and paste it over here. So here I'm not using the proxy integration at this point of time. So click on save. Okay. Now, once you are done with this, again, select the resource that is front end, click on action, say create method. Now we will create the post method. Click on this tick mark. Again, we will integrate the same Lambda function that is API Ajax Lambda and say save. Okay. Now, once you're done with this, click on action, say deploy API. Select the deployment stage. I will say version double one and say deploy. Now the API is deployed successfully. Let's go through the HTML part. So here I have this index.html which looks something like this. So basically I will simply first give you the view of this. So I will directly load it from local. So index.html looks something like this. So here I have two fields that is name and age. And as soon as I click on post data, it will post that data to the API gateway. And then in another line, I have this label that is data from get. So as soon as I click on get data, it will display the data that is coming from the API gateway uh, and replace this text, right? So this is how it looks. So let's go to the code. Now here uh, I had imported uh, that is Ajax. So as you can see uh, using script tag and then I have defined a body 
and within this body i have this form so it has name as a label and then the text box again age as a label and the text box and finally the submit button uh, whose value is post data and finally on the other line i have this label that is data from get and finally the button that is get data so this is all now below that below body i have the script so here i am defining a click event for the get method so i'm saying hash get data dot click so this hash get data is referring to this button right so whenever this button will get clicked it will trigger this function or it will trigger this click event now here i am defining dollar dot ajax followed by certain parameters that is type that stands for which method you want to invoke so here i am defining the get method then the data type that we are expecting from the api gateway so that is json and finally the api endpoint url so that's going to be this one so let me copy and paste it so copy and i will paste it over here followed by the resource name so that's going to be the front end i will save this and finally uh, it has two methods that is success and error so if the call is successful then it will perform certain action defined within this function and if it's failing then it will perform certain action that is defined within this error function right and similarly uh, we have another click event that is on hash submit so this hash submit is referring to this button right this one that is post data and i think uh, rest of the option remain as it is so here on line 48 i am defining a variable that is form data uh, that is name and age so i am fetching this value from the text box uh, that is dollar hash name dot value and i am preparing a dictionary or object over here and then finally i am defining the uh, ajax call that is again type as post because here we are posting the data we want to post the name and age of a person to the api endpoint and we want to post as the content type as application slash json and finally this data refers to the payload that we are passing so here we are using json.stringify followed by the form data as a parameter and finally we have the url so that's going to be the same so let me copy and paste it over here and similarly uh, it has success and the error function so we can define certain action based on the success or the error that we are receiving right so we are simply doing console.log on success and similarly console.log for error but one more thing i uh, forgot to mention is line number 37 so here if the call is successful that is get call is successful then we are setting the value of this label that is this one data from get with whatever we are getting the response from the api endpoint right so here we will certainly get hello from lambda so that label text will be replaced with hello from lambda so let's have a look so now uh, we will be uploading this index.html to the s3 bucket uh, so navigate to s3 management console So here we are. So I will be using the same bucket for hosting that I have created in the previous tutorial that is of part 26. So I think that was host of file, right? So I'll be using this. So if you want to look at the configuration of this bucket for static site hosting, then you can refer part 26 of this tutorial series. So here we are and I will be using this host of file bucket to host a static site so i will simply upload index.html over here i will say upload now uh, i will click on properties static website hosting oops so here i will be having the endpoint url and as you can see here we have the same data or the same form data that we 
just saw as a part of the local file right and now let me right click and inspect and open console so it says uh, fail to load resource the server responded with a status 404 so that's basically for favicon.ico so that's the site icon so i don't have that so no need to worry about this error so let me simply try with the get data so i will say get data and here it says access to blah 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 and it's throwing the course error so to overcome this error we will go back to the api gateway click on resources from the left panel select the resource so in my case it's front end and then click on action and say enable course click on this option and here it will add certain headers right and it will create the options method over here so click on enable course and replace existing course headers yes so these are the action that it will perform while enabling the course so uh, i will certainly uh, do a tutorial specific to course soon so for now just click on resources click on action say enable course and the course is enabled and finally again say action and deploy api select the deployment stage and say deploy now let's go back to that tab and reload this so let's try again click on get data and as you can see on the right side on the console it says success the success method is called and if you look at this label then it has the message that is coming from the api gateway that is hello from lambda right so if i again reload this then you can see data from get and as soon as i click on get data it will replace that text with the hello from lambda message that is coming from the lambda function or the api gateway now in terms of uh post data let me put in some name my channel name age maybe 10 and i will say post data and as you can see here we have another message that is success right and we can look at that data by going to the lambda function click on monitoring we will have that data since we had print event within the lambda function and i will say view logs in cloudwatch and here we have the logs so open it and as you can see the very last so here we have the payload that is name as src cde and age as 10 so here within rest of the call it's empty right it's because uh, we are not passing any data to the api gateway while calling the get event so that's the reason the event is empty and while we did the post data thing here we have the data right uh, that is coming from the front end or the html or the site that we are hosted right so well uh, that's all i wanted to cover in this tutorial right so basically uh, this configuration or this uh, functionality i had shown you without the proxy integration thing right so here we are not using the proxy integration or the lambda proxy integration right so this is without lambda proxy integration if we look at the resource and if we click on any method and if we look at integration request then we had not checked this use lambda proxy integration method right so here you can manipulate the payload or uh, whatever the data is coming using mapping templates and how you want to pass that data or forward that data to the lambda function right since we are not using lambda proxy integration i will certainly cover the same for lambda proxy integration too Maybe I will cover that as a part of the uh, course tutorial, right? So, well, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. And as usual, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below. And I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.